today is uh, look at uh, more maximum likelihood uh, estimators. <clears throat> and uh, let's, let's just go through a little bit of review. So uh, before we get in, the, the problems we're going to look at today are going to be uh, uh, yeah, a couple of them are a little more involved. But uh, anyway, uh, you know by now that what we do is we uh, collect a sample of data, uh, which, uh, you know, we can say depend on some parameter. And it's important to see here that what we're collecting may depend on well, let's let's get rid of that n right there because that may confuse you thinking that the number of parameters uh, you know it's the same as uh, as the sample data so let's say uh, it could be m parameters and uh, <clears throat> you know what we get into so far is is, is so far we've been, I guess we've been uh, just dealing with one parameter. But uh, it's not a stretch of the imagination to see that uh, we could be drawing from a distribution with two unknown parameters. And guys, eventually, uh, we're going to get into regression models. Where we have... Again, don't confuse this end with this end. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, where we have um, uh, n plus 1 parameters. So uh, again, uh, our parameter space here, uh, or our parameters, uh, which um, you know we've looked so far again, just one parameter, but we're going to uh, extend that today to look at this situation. And then ultimately, we're going to need to realize that we may have, uh, you know, even more than two parameters. All right, guys. So let's uh, let's get get real formal here. Uh, so uh, again, we've got our data, and ultimately, what we're trying to do here is find the estimate of our parameter, which um, maximizes the probability not really <laughs> I should say maximizes the likelihood of getting our data Okay, so uh, bringing in uh, some notation, uh, we have data x1, x2, xn uh, is a random sample. From a distribution. That depends on um, oh, I don't know. Let's just say what well, I don't want to put this. Let's go one or more parameters. <clears throat> um, we have a probability function uh, and let's let's keep in mind here I mean depending on the type of data we have
<clears throat> and our, of course our notation we would have here is we have our data given uh, and uh, on some parameter. I'll tell you what, I want to spend this a little bit because of the purpose of part of today's lecture. And uh, of course, you know, this this is obviously going to be restricted to um, to some parameter space. You know, sometimes zero to one, sometimes real numbers, just depending on uh, the nature of our problem. So uh, so next, um, we're going to have our likelihood function. Which, as we know, or we better know, <laughs> is the product. And again, guys, the reason we can do this uh, is take the product is because of our assumptions. And that is that we have uh, random sample. More importantly, we have independence. And again, please forgive this. I don't want the N's and the M's to be confused here. So let's talk about M parameters and N being used as we've used it so far, okay? So, um, guys, here's ultimately, uh, uh, you know, what we're doing uh, in maximum likelihood estimation. Now, let's set up a really simple problem, and I want to show you how we can jump over to R and, <clears throat> and uh, do some really simple stuff, okay? Uh, let's say that we want to know, um, oh, I don't know. Come up with something here on the fly. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's have a little fun here. Got any Ohio State fans out there? Uh, well, I'm a huge UK fan, so let's make sure that's. Sorry. All right, guys. Let's uh, let's say that we're taking a random sample uh, of Shawnee State University students, and let's code uh, x equals zero um, if the student. is not a UK fan. Now clearly what do we call this? We'll call this a failure. Again, keep it light here guys. Don't break Ohio State bad on me. Alright guys, x equal 1 is clearly going to be a success in my eyes more ways than one student is a UK fan <clears throat> so we're going to collect our data and we call this the perfect vector Okay, we really don't, but in my eyes, that would be the perfect vector. Okay, so we go out and we take a random sample of 100 students, and all kidding aside, we get something, you know, since we're in Ohio State Buckeye territory here, 
we're probably going to get a lot of zeros. And let's just say, for example, that um, that we end up getting uh, 28 out of 100 students who say they're a University of Kentucky fan. Now, clearly, because we uh, have uh, we have a discrete probability distribution, and this is a binomial distribution. Well, actually, it's a Bernoulli distribution because we're um, uh, we have n equal to one. So we could say that um, therefore that uh, based on data, that's what you remember. In this case, we'll probably call that p. Uh, it's going to be p sub x sub i. 1 minus p, 1 minus x sub i. So from there, uh, our likelihood function, as we've seen before, is going to be the product. Uh, of, um, I'll tell you what, I, I want to... Sometimes I forget I'm teaching and not just doing. Uh, so it's going to be um, the um, p sub x sub 1 and 1 minus p to the 1 minus x sub 1 times and p sub x sub 2. Minus p to the one minus x to two times dot 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 p to the x n one minus p x n. All right. <clears throat> now we know that we would take. Ultimately, we would take the uh, the natural log of both sides because it makes finding the derivative. Uh, easier. But what I want to do now, I want to switch over to um, uh, to R and show you a way to visualize. Uh, well, let me bring R up here. Um, lost my pointer. All right, let's bring um, bring R up here and uh, just take a look. All right. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to create different values of p and look at the likelihood of getting uh, our data from it. So uh, ultimately, um, what I want to do here is I want to calculate the likelihood of getting our data, which was... Uh, what was it? What did I say? 28 uh, out of 100 um, for a variety of values for our parameter. All right. For example, uh, I may calculate the likelihood of getting our data if. Uh, let's uh, let's see. Let's, let's just use instead of theta, let's use uh, p. If uh, p is equal to point uh, twenty-five, okay. So uh, the likelihood of uh, point twenty-five. I think I can get away with this. Is going to be. Uh, so we're going to have what? Uh, 0.25. I'll tell you what, let's do this just in case. I don't know if it would affect it or not. Uh, raised to the, um, what, 28th power uh, times 0.75. 
raise to the 72nd power. So the likelihood of 0.25 uh, is a very, very, very small number, and in you know, an isolation of other uh, values, uh, it really doesn't tell us much. So what I'd like to do here is I'd like to set up uh, a uh, uh, you know, a manner in which we could calculate the likelihood for different values. So, um, let's see, let's set up our P. So I'm going to set up P to be uh, sequence from uh, 0 to 1. And I want to do this by, uh, let's see, let's go 0 0.05, no, 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 it's not, let's go 0 0.01. Okay, now if you look at P, what I've done here is uh, have a lot of values, you know, ranging from 0 to 1, uh, clearly uh, increasing by 100th, okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to, uh, calculate the likelihood of each of these. So I want to take the likelihood and uh, so what I'll need to do here is I need to take uh, P uh, raised to the 28th power times obviously 1 minus P raised to the 72nd power. And if I get my likelihoods uh, for each of these, you'll see that I, uh, I get this. Now, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to look at a graph of this. So, um, no, it's not. Let's look at, uh, let's, let's look at the values, just uh, P and L. And uh, when I do this, what I'm looking for is the biggest number. Uh, and, uh, you know, the biggest number is going to be the one that uh, has the, uh, it's, this is all in scientific notation. So right now, just looking at the graph, uh, it appears the biggest number is on line 29, where the parameter estimate uh, is 0.28. Now, you know, shock, 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 right, from what we've seen before, that the uh, estimate of the parameter would be uh, x over n, which would be the sum of our ones divided by our sample size. Well, we can get a little better indication of this if I go just plot, uh, yeah, this will work. No, it won't work. Um, it, uh, Shoot, Dad. How about this? Yeah, okay, so what happens here is you get a plot of the likelihoods, and uh, it's no stretch of the imagination that right up here, if we could find where the derivative is set equal to zero, we find the maximum of our, fu of our function. Uh, you know, we can't get a clear definitive answer here, but when we drop this down, it's not beyond the stretch of imagination that the maximum value occurs at 0.28. Okay, so again, uh, we're not uh, setting the world on fire here. Uh, just give you a visual and uh, uh, an illustration through R in a very, very simple and trivial example of, uh, uh, you know, how the maximum likelihood uh, uh, estimate occurs uh, at where we proved it did, I think in uh, uh, maybe video 15, I believe. I'm not sure. All right, guys. Let's uh, let's move this on a little bit. Let's get into a situation where we have a um, couple of parameters, and uh, so I think the last problem we did with the normal distribution is uh, we said that we had a random sample. from a normal distribution. And 
with uh, Mu unknown and variance known. Now, guys, what I want to do here is I uh, want to come in and look at uh, what happens when we have two unknowns. So you may think of our parameters as being uh, theta one is mu, theta two is uh, our variance. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> you know what we're going to do here is uh, just as you would uh, you would think we do. We're going to set up a problem, so we won't need the uh, the density function. So we're going to have f. is going to be over this and uh, so let's talk about our parameters, uh, our parameter space here. Uh, guys, obviously, um, mu can take this value, and um, standard deviation has to be greater than zero. All right. So we want to take, uh, let's see, likelihood function, let me try adjusting something here, I've been messing around with this a little bit, uh, let's go with that spacing, seems like it's a little thick. All right, uh, so we're going to have the product uh, of x of i's, theta 1, theta 2, and what we're going to have here is going to be the uh, Okay. Now, um, so um, so guys, next thing we want to do is uh, take the log of this. Give us let's go back here and check this out. So we're dividing these, so we're going to be subtracting. Yes. 
Let's see, so we're going to have the line break there. Yeah, you know, so we've got the log DC, so this gives us the power. Okay. So we're going to have um, over to beta 2. No, 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 no. Okay. What's up? Do you need what's up? All right. Uh, is that all? All right. Interrupted by my daughter. Okay. Let me make sure I've got this. Let me go back to. So we get negative in. Uh, so this term right here, so we got one over, so we have negative C. So, okay, I'm good with that one. Second term, uh, so one over, not too tight when it's doing. Okay, all right, this looks good. Now, <clears throat> gonna, uh, what we're going to have to do now is uh, you're gonna have to put on your uh, <laughs> calculus hat. Uh, and remember that uh, when we have a function of two variables, we have a function of several variables, we have to take uh, partial derivatives. And remember, if we're just doing derivatives, we use that notation. And obviously, if we're doing a partial, um, for example, if we have a function of uh, x and y, and we want to take the partial of x with respect to y, holding uh, y constant, then you know obviously this is the notation that we use. Um, if it's been a while, you need to review some of that. Um, but um, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, complete this example uh, and leave that up to you. So, guys, first thing I'd need to do is I'd need to take... Uh, well, I don't need to. I could go either way, but I want to uh, take the. Uh, and guys, remember, uh, this is this was confusing to me at first. Once we get so far in mathematics, uh, I can define log to just be uh, the natural log. So I want to take the um, uh, the partial of the uh, log of the likelihood function. And then I want to do this first step with respect to um, to theta one, and um, so with respect to theta one, uh, uh, our first term is irrelevant. Uh, our second term is irrelevant. And with respect to this, we're going to get into Let's see, what do we got with respect to theta 1? So we're going to have our constant. Um, using the chain rule, we're going to have the inside derivative negative 1. So ultimately, we're going to end up with uh, two, 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 2 times. Right, so we're going to end up with uh, negative 2. There's a sign. Clearly this. Need to multiply by negative one over two. Theta squared. Yeah, make sure that's right. First times the derivative of the second, uh, two times. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so um, 
So next, let's, let me just rewrite this. Uh, so I need to write uh, set this equal to zero. So I'm going to have negative two times the sum i equal one to the n uh, x sub i minus theta one. Uh, Times negative one, so I'm just gonna make this over to theta two. So I need to set that equal to zero. So guys, obviously, uh, one thing I can do to simplify things, and another thing I can do to simplify things is multiply both sides by um, theta two. So we're going to end up with equal to zero. Uh, we're going to partition out the sums or distribute the sums, I should say. So we're going to have the uh, the sum of our x sub i's minus the sum of our theta 1's set equal to 0. And it's no stretch of the imagination that uh, over here we still get. And um, So here we're just going to get n theta ones. All right, I'm going to use the power of the eraser here. So make this equal to. So guys, theta one is exactly. what we would think it would be. So therefore what we can say is we can say that our estimate of theta one, which is our estimate of mu, is just the sample mean. Now, we'd already proven that, uh, or actually shown up uh, in, in the previous video. Uh, now guys, I wanna put our attention on uh, estimate uh, our estimator for uh, uh, theta 2. So let's go back to uh, we want to take the partial the log of the likelihood of theta 1 theta 2. This time we want to do this with respect to theta 2. And um, so what are we going to get here? I'm going to go all the way back to get a visual on this. Okay, so the first term is going to give us uh, 1 over. So negative n over 2 times 1 over theta 2. Uh, this term will be irrelevant. And this is going to be the, uh, so let's see, times the first, so negative two, so we're going to get a plus. Uh, okay, so what this is going to give us negative two. Okay. Yeah. Minus. Okay, well, we're going to get to this term. So we get driven the first time to second. And then the derivative of this time's derivative. Cancels out, so we're going to get 
we think about this term as um, negative one half theta negative one. So okay, I see. All right. So this term right here is going to give us a plus uh, one half. sum from i equal 1 to m x of i minus theta 1 squared over theta 2 squared. All right, let's um, clean that up a little bit. So negative n over 2 theta squared plus okay. so n squared. Over two. Sorry for jumping around here, but I'm trying to keep this straight in my mind. Going from screen to screen, didn't want to take the time to actually write it again. All right, now guys, we need to um, set this equal to zero. Um, and probably what I want to want to do is multiply through by. You know, I don't know what do you think. Uh, two. Theta 2 squared. So this will give me negative n theta 2 plus let's see. Okay, so we got theta n. Yeah, this works out nicely. Okay, so I equal 1 to n. And uh, we have x sub i minus theta. Yeah, it's going to work real nicely. Okay, so let's see. So theta 2. is going to be equal to. Yeah, let's just be equal to the um, over n, right? Which uh, is exactly what we, uh, yeah, okay, good. So, uh, guys, our estimate uh, for our variance is maybe not what you thought you would get. Uh, you know, you, you, if you remember the, the, the variance formula, the sample variance formula, uh, you usually divide by n minus 1. Um, but uh, what we get here is actually uh, the sum from i equal 1 to n x minus mu, well, x minus theta 1 squared over n. And uh, the reason is this gets into something called biased and unbiased estimators. It turns out that uh, uh, we can show that this is an unbiased estimator, uh, whereas this is not.